I have the great honor tonight of introducing the speaker. John Phillips graduated from Chickasha High School in 1988. Uh, we probably don't want to go back to those years too much, but he was a student of mine at that time. And we called him John John. And John John came in every day to class. He would turn his head around the door and look to see if I was there and smile, this contagious smile, and say, Hi, Miss Ray, every day. Cheered me up every day. He is a USAO alumni and graduated from the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry in 1996. He returned to his hometown to open a scratch practice fall in practice in the fall of 1996. Since that time, Dr. Phillips has positioned his practice in the top 1% of practices nationally. His office has won numerous national awards, including the 1998 Crown Council Young Dentist of the Year, Master Plan Alliance Dental Office of the Year in 2001, Dental Organizations for Conscious Sedation Dentistry in the year of 2006, and the Sunrise Dental Organization Practice of the year 2006, 2007, and 2009. When I first heard that John John was a dentist, it was kind of off kilter to me. I never really thought he would be a dentist, but when I heard him explain that the reason he wanted to do it and why he enjoyed it was because he helped people with their self-confidence and self-worth, then I knew why he had become a dentist. He has been recognized at the state capitol for his charity, Dentistry from the Heart, and has given away over one and a half million dollars worth of free dental care. Dr. Phillips has been a clinical instructor and a national instructor for sedation dentistry, dental boot camp, and osteo-ready dental implants. Today, his practice at 29th Street Dental Care specializes in sedation dentistry, dental implants, and fast braces. On any given day, his practice will see patients from all parts of Oklahoma as well as Wichita Falls, Texas. His practice consists of three dentists, five dental hygienists, and 27 employees. He credits his <coughs> wife, Angie, also a CHS graduate, for always play, playing a pivotal, pivotal role in growing and developing his practice. They have three children, JP, John, Preston, and Aspen. You may have heard some of Dr. Phillips' commercials and where he says that my name is Dr. John Phillips from 29th Street Dental Care. Well, he says it so fast, it turns out you think his name is Dr. Care. That somehow is appropriate. I am pleased and honored to introduce John John, Dr. Care, Dr. John Phillips. I knew she was going to say something. I just knew. I didn't know what she was going to say, but that's, that's my teacher right there. <laughs> that is. Okay, so I have just a few moments with you, and I've got some stuff I have to share that's very, very important. You see, Jared Lee from uh, First Baptist Church calls me, and he says, you know, uh, I want you to speak. And at first I thought, you know, well, okay. And then I realized it was for the back of the Lord, and I thought, you know what? What do I say? What do I say? What do I say to a bunch of kids who most of you have been around your whole life? Most of you are your parents I grew up with. Then I thought, you know, I usually talk to my employees or to other dentists. What do I say? Then I thought, you know, graduation is nothing but a whirlwind. And for me, it happened yesterday. Just yesterday, I was right there. Time's going to go by fast. So here's what I'm asking you seniors to do for just a moment, please. I need you to clear your minds and imagine the next day. What's next? What's then? What then? All of you will be going on to other things. All of you are about to experience change. So now it's my job to visit with you and to give you advice. 
like you were my son. And I'm so proud of him. Like you were my son or my daughter. So please clear your minds from all distractions for what I'm about to tell each and every one of you. They're my secrets to success. They're my life principles. And it's what's worked for me. Here's the hint. Here's a hint. None of it came from that I come up with it on my own. It came from many other people. So let's get started. The first thing I want to visit with you guys about, very, very important. In your life, you must have goals without question. You have to have goals, Kate Morris. You have to have goals. Pay attention. This is important. You are my son. You are my daughter. I'm telling you, you're about to leave and go off to college. You have to have goals. Okay? Bird, don't lose me on this. Okay, here's, I want you to finish this with me. Finish this statement. People do not plan to fail. They fail to plan. All right? Do you realize that most people spend more time planning a two-week vacation than their financial future? They spend more time and energy worrying where they're going to go for a vacation than worrying about what their retirement's going to be like. That's just fact. Proverbs 15.22 says this. It says, many plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Get advice from many people. Many of you want to try to do it on your own. Don't do it on your own. Get advice from many other people. You do not have to reinvent the wheel. In the 1990s, there was a research study that was done. And this research study, what they did is they interviewed the top 100 executives. These are people in Forbes magazine, okay? The top 100 business executives, and they found some startling similarities I want to share with you. Number one, first question they asked them is, do you have goals? Now, these are the top guys. Of course, they all had goals. Question number two, I want to make sure I get this right. Question number two, do you have them written down? 100% of them had them written down. Question number three, do you look at them daily? Now, the other day I went to, on a field trip with Aspen. And when I was a kid, I grew up, and I would go up and go out in the backyard and I'd make a tent, and we'd get out the flashlight. And you guys have done this, and you shine the flashlight, it lights the whole tent up, right? You know what I'm talking about. Well, I went to play laser tag with Aspen. And we go out, we got our packs on, and the, the room's dark and it's foggy, and you get ready and you're shooting people, right? And you're scoring points. You've all done this, right? So when you're shooting people, that laser energy is going in one direction. There's no scatter anywhere. You understand? If you have your goals written down, it's that focused energy in one direction. It's not scattered out everywhere. It's where you're going, and you have to have goals. The fourth thing that they ask these guys, and these are the top 100 executives, they're all multimillionaires. They're all over thousands and thousands of employees. Their companies do millions, if not mil billions of dollars in revenue. The fourth question they asked them, do you look at your goals daily? I'm sorry. Do you carry your goals with you? Out of 100 executives, 87 of them carry their goals with them. You have to have goals. You have to write them down. You have to look at them. And if you'll carry them with you, it'll become a reality. Now, in my opinion, your first goal, first goal without question should be be in the center of God's will. That should be your number one goal. Be in the center of God's will. Pray over your direction. Why? Because most of you really don't have a clue what you're going to be when you grow up. And that's okay. I interviewed Dr. Jim Hall when I was a freshman in high school to become a dentist. I went and, and interviewed him, and it was why I wanted to be a dentist. Freshman in high school, age 14, 15 years old. But later on in life, I had these questions. Even in college, I had these questions. Is dentistry really what I want to be? And I ended up interviewing, uh, I'm sorry, spending time with a chiropractor, a physician, uh, spending time in the emergency room, spending time with other dentists. And you know what? I prayed over and God opened the doors. And there's no question that this is what my calling is, is to be a dentist. Napoleon Hill wrote a book called Think and Grow Rich. And in his book, he says this. He says, listen to me. Whatever the mind can conceive, whatever you can think about, whatever the mind can conceive, the mind can believe. And believing is the first step to achieving. Your goals will always be changing and be clarifying. The first step is to write your goals down. I challenge you on this. Connor, you listening? You've got to write your goals down. Okay? Second thing that, that, that I have to share with you, you're about to go off to college, wherever, in life, without question, 
You get what you deserve. Listen to me. You get what you deserve. I believe this wholeheartedly. No questions. I live by these principles. Now, what does this mean? Now, many of you are thinking, well, what does this mean? Well, the truth is, now throughout history, good things have happened to bad people. I'm not talking about that. I asked Jonathan this. I said, Jonathan, how many of your friends are going to college? He said, well, Dad, I really don't know any of them that aren't. Now, I know some of you may not be going to college. But whether you're going to college or not, this applies. You get what you deserve. If you're going to go to class, number one, if you're going to go to college, number one, go to class. Don't just go to class. Be there. What do I mean by be there? Don't go to class and sit there and be texting your girlfriend or be on Snapchat or Facebook or Twitter, whatever that stuff is. I don't really know. <laughs> but you've got you to gotta be there. Be there. Be interested in what the teacher has to say. That is your job. Do you realize what you learn in college or, or a Votech type school, whatever you're going to do, what you learn there will affect you the rest of your life. Okay? You get what you deserve. Now, some of you want to say, some of you want to point the blame game. Some of you want to say, well, it's somebody else's fault. You know, if you go to, you know, if you go to college and some of, the, some of the class sizes are as big as this auditorium, you are a name and a number. Maybe you can't even understand the instructor. That's okay. There's somebody out there that can help you. You have to find them because you get what you deserve. Don't point the blame. Don't, don't be going around telling everybody, hey, you know, my instructor's terrible. He doesn't care. No, it's up to you. You make the difference. Now, let me ask you this. Parents, how do you feel about this? Because for most of you, your checkbooks are still open once your kids head off to college. Right? In fact, what would happen if most of you... First of all, you, your parents would probably, what about to tell you, your parents would probably fall over. Uh, but if, if you headed off to college, and the first week of school you called your mom or dad and you said, hey, my first goal, well actually my first goal should be to be in the center of God's will, but my second goal, my second goal should be this. My second goal is this semester I'm going to make a 95 or higher on every single class I take. Now, I encourage each and every one of you, Evan, each and every one of you to shoot for the stars. You understand? Aim high with your goals. Shoot for the stars. And if you come up a little short, that's okay. So if your first goal in, in college life is to shoot, shoot, shoot for a 95, if you come up a little short, nobody's going to be upset. Okay, aim high. If you shoot for a 70, you're probably going to make a 60, and that's not good. <laughs> All right, finish this for me. Good things come to those who... Wait, we've heard that many, many times. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that at all. On my computer in my office, I, had, I, I came across this quote 15 years ago. If you come into my office, it's on my computer. I look at it daily. Benjamin Franklin says this. Benjamin Franklin says, everything, everything, Tristan, everything comes to him who hustles while he waits. You gotta hustle while you wait. Benjamin Franklin said that. Now my grandfather had an eighth grade education, TJ. My grandfather had an eighth, eighth grade uh, uh, education. He used to tell me, he would say, run and get this for me. Run and get that for me. He never said, would you please go get this? It was always run and get this for me. Okay, and one day I'm working in the garden. I was eight years old, I'll never forget this. And he said, would you go get that shovel for me? I'm like, yeah, okay, so I'm going to get the shovel, right? I'm going to get the shovel. And all of a sudden, I get lifted off the ground just to turn around in time to see his boot lifting me up. And I said, some of y'all back there know about the boot, right? He lifted me up with the boot, right? He said, grandson. He never called me grandson. He called me son. He said, son, if I tell you to hustle, you do it, and you go get something, and you don't mess around. You do it with a purpose. You go, and you get it, and you come right back. Everything was run and get this, run and get that. One of my mentors in life was my grandfather. Let's see what the Bible says about that. Proverbs 6, Proverbs 6, 6 says this. Consider the ant, you sluggard. How many of you want to be a slug? Don't be a slug. Consider the ant, you sluggard. Consider all its ways and be wise. All its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no ruler, no overseer. Yet, it stores its provisions in the summer and gathers food at harvest. What's that mean? The ant's always out there hustling. An ant is doing what it ought to do when it ought to do it. No debate. You should do what you ought to do when you're supposed to do it when nobody's looking. Right, Maddie Irvin? Over there yawning? You with me? She had a late night last night. I don't know that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now, listen to me. If you were my son or daughter, I'm going to talk to you the same way, and that's what this is about. 
Okay, consider the ants. Be an ant. Always, always hustle. Okay, the other thing is this. My grandfather used to tell me when you get out of bed, you put your pants on one leg at a time like everyone else. You make your own luck. You make your own opportunities. And if you're out there hustling, opportunities will come. Throughout your lifetime, you're going to have many, many opportunities. You make them by being ready for them. Okay? Scott Brooks, the head coach for the Thunder, he said this one time. I wrote it down. It's by my computer as well. I look at it often. Scott Brooks says, losing is just an opportunity to learn how to win. Things aren't always going to go your way. It's not going to be a bed of roses, but you're always going to be learning to get better, learning how to win. Okay? But in just my life, things have changed. What has changed? Things have changed because in the 60s, John F. Kennedy said this. Now finish this with me. It's not what your country can do for you, but what? JFK said that in the 60s, but here we are in today. And today our society, today our society says that we are a handout society. Today our society makes you think you deserve this or you deserve that. Let me tell all y'all something right now. How you got here was because of your parents. How, you know, you you guys, I'm so proud of you, but you didn't do it on your own. Okay? You don't deserve this, you don't deserve that. You have to go out and get it. Okay? I don't believe what the world's telling you. I believe I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you get what you deserve. That's point number two. Point number three, something I had to share with every one of you. You're about to head off to go do whatever you're going to do. And here comes the change. The change is this. Be humble. Be nice. Be thankful. And give. Number one, be humble. Don't be proud and prideful. Don't go around with your chest all stuck out, TJ, thinking you're all this and that. <laughs> Don't go around doing it because you're not. Be humble and thankful. And if you're humble and thankful, then God can use you. Okay? It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about him. None of you got here on your own. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, 26, I love Proverbs if you haven't noticed. The Bible says this. Listen to me. He who trusts in himself is a fool, that he who walks in wisdom is kept safe. Be wise, be humble. Be nice. You have to be nice. My dad used to tell me, be nice to everybody. Be nice to everybody. One time, it's about 10 years ago, I'm in line a couple days after Christmas, and I'm at Walmart, and the line is long. You know what I'm talking about. And there is no Christmas cheer, no ho, ho, ho. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's after Christmas, and the line is really long. I'm standing in line, and there's this poor little lady, and she's getting herself worked all to, all to death, Bailey. She's working herself to death. And all of a sudden, it's my turn. I'm about to return something. I just feel so sorry for her. But you know what? I'm going to kill her with kindness. I'm going to be nice to her. And the craziest thing happened to, to me because I'm sitting here, and I, I returned everything. And when I'm done, she looks up at me. And she says something I'll never forget. She says, was your dad a mailman? I said, yes, he was. She says, he delivered our mail for like eight or 10 years or something. He was always the nicest guy. My dad used to tell me, make people feel better about themselves. And here he was living what he told me. Be nice, be kind to everybody. Now, as a side note, my aunt used to push me in math and in high school. She used to push me and she'd say, do the right thing, don't cut any corners. And that was something, you know, you, you guys need to listen to your parents, they're smarter than you. The best advice my mom ever gave me, I was 22 years old and I was about to, about to go into dental school and I was still having questions and I called my mom up and I'll never ever forget this. I said, mom, I don't know, I'm 22 years old. Dental school is four years. That's going to make me 26 when I get out. And she paused. And she said, well, so you'll be how old when you graduate? I said, I'll be 26 when I graduate. She said, how old are you now? I said, I'm, I'm 22. And she says this. She says, someday you're going to be 26. You can be 26 in the dentist if you want to. Reach for the stars. Okay, listen to your parents. All right? Be nice. Be thankful, be humble, and the last thing is to give. 
I tell Jonathan this all the time. I tell Preston this all the time. I say give, and I tell my employees this all the time. This is something I live by. Give more value than what they expect. So if you're mowing yards, what do you do? You don't just mow the yard. You pick up the trash ahead of time. Then you edge it, then you blow it off. You do more than what the customer expects, okay? Because as a Christian, that's what we're supposed to do. Do more than what they expect. Give and give wisely. I'm a dentist. How do I give? How can I give? Well, we, we do something called dentistry from the heart, where one day a year, we close our office down. We have almost 100 employees. Um, last year, we saw 225 or so patients, and we did dentistry for free on people that couldn't afford it. And you know what? It is the hardest day we'll work. We'll work 15, 12 to 15 hours that day. It's the hardest day we'll work, and my employees say it's the best day of the year. We're to give. Maybe you go off to college, maybe you don't know what to do, but there's things you can volunteer at. There's things you can do to have that giving spirit. What does, what does the Bible say about giving? The Bible says in Malachi 3.10, it says this. The only time I know where God says, test me on this. You listening? God says, test me on this. Malachi 3.10. God says, test me on this and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room. We are to give and give wisely. Be givers. I ask my employees, I've asked other dentists, I've asked other dental groups before. When you go around in life, what's your number on your forehead? What is your number on your forehead? Now think about this, because if I was to ask you, between on a scale from 1 to 10, what's your number on your forehead? Okay, and I'm going to say, you know, a number 10 means you're awesome, you're perfect, and everything's great. And then a number one is you're a slug, you're a low life, you're living, you know, you're walking like this, poor me all the time, poor me, poor that, right? So if I was to ask you what your number is, I ask people this all the time, especially on employees. I say, what's your number? Most people say it's a six or a seven. Why would it ever be a six or a seven? God made you exactly how you're supposed to be made. He doesn't make any junk, and he didn't make any mistakes with you. You should be a 10. Now, that doesn't mean you're prideful. God can't use pride. You know, you're supposed to be a humble 10, but you're supposed to be a 10. Now, listen to me. You are a 10, but you're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Well, there was one guy, and they put him on a cross. Nobody's perfect. Not me, not you. Don't think the grass is always greener because it's not. Okay? Let's look at people in the Bible. King David. David and Goliath, he, was, he made some dumb decisions later on. King Solomon, the Old Testament, they say King Solomon was the wisest king of the land, but yet he, he made mistakes later on. Samson was chosen by God, he made mistakes. Peter, Peter got out the sword, Jake, and he cut the, cut the, uh, the guy's ear off, right? And within 24 hours, he had denied Christ three times. Nobody's perfect, not you, not me. Paul, in the New Testament, he wrote most of the books in the, in the New Testament that Paul asked. Paul says, Lord, please take away my iniquities. What's he saying? Take away my problems. Take away my sin. And the truth of the matter is, God says, if I take that away from you, why will you need to lean on me? Nobody's perfect. Now listen to me. This is important right here, what I'm about to tell you. Sometimes, sometimes high school is a bunch of nonsense. Listen to me. Sometimes high school is a bunch of nonsense. Things happen in high school, and sometimes it creates a pecking order. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Some people are here, some people are here, some people are down here. That's a bunch of nonsense. There's so much life after high school. There's so much more after high school. Please do not let high school define who you are. Don't get in the glory days thing where you just think, oh, this is the best ever. No, there's so much more to life past high school. God doesn't make any junk. You have been wonderfully made exactly how God wanted it to happen. There are no mistakes. I've heard this verse before. Baby pretty much stole my whole sermon, lecture, whatever. <laughs> Jeremiah 20, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He knows the plans he has for you. Plans for you to prosper, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. God is telling you this. Okay? However, statistics say most of you are going to graduate and you will not get plugged into a church. Statistics say that the world is going to chew you up and spit you out. Statistics say that most of you have kind of gotten away from church already. Now, out of 128 graduating, you're all not here. Are the statistics right? Don't be a statistic. 
God made you exactly how you're supposed to be made. Okay? Now listen to me. The last thing I will tell you before you leave my house, last thing I'm going to tell Jonathan, or the last thing I am telling Jonathan, JP, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If I am not in partners with Christ, it's going to be an uphill battle. It's going to be a struggle. I pray for God's will in your life. You should be praying for God's will in your life. This is a huge, huge part for me. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going to say it. I can do all. Say all. all. Now say it again. All. All. all right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It says, I can do all. Not some things. All things. It says, I can do all things through John who strengthens me. No, 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 no. I, not through John. It's through Christ. But here is. Here's the hint. Always be humble. Always be thankful. Now, there was a wise man who built himself built his house on the rock and the storms came and the house stood weathered the storm and then a foolish man came along and he built his house on the sand and the storms came the foundation didn't hold there's two parts to this that's important who's your rock who is your rock who's you going to build your house on okay i was 14 years old when i became a christian i was saved on easter sunday best decision i ever made Jesus is my rock. But there's two parts to the story. Who's your rock is the first part. The second part is storms are coming. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be problems. It's not always going to be a, a piece of cake. Katie, you hear me? All right, it's not always going to be easy. Now, there's a book that I read by Wallace Waddles, and the book was wrote, wrote in 1918, and the name of the book is The Science of Getting Rich. It's not what you're thinking, but this is what Wallace Waddles tells us in this book. He says, do not go into the closet and pray, thinking that that's enough. What he means is, don't get up in the morning, go get, have your little two minutes of quiet time in the closet, get out and say, okay, I'm going to go live my life the way I want to live it. Don't do that. Okay, Tristan? What he's saying, what he's saying is this, constantly go throughout the day praying for God to be with you in whatever it is you're doing. Constantly. Now, what's the Bible say about it? 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing, for that God's will is evident in your life. Pray without ceasing. Ceasing. Okay. I need every senior in 2014 to stand up, please. Hustle. Remember, my grandfather. Hustle. Hustle. Okay. Number one. I believe in you. I want you to hear that. I believe in every single one of you. I believe you're going to make a difference in whatever path that God has for you. I believe that you're going to make a difference in your life and in, life, in, in the lives of many, many other people. I believe in you. Now, if you're a parent or a family member, on the count of three, we're all going to say together, we believe in you. One, two, three. We believe in you. Shout it. One, two, three. We believe in you. Did y'all hear them? They believe in you. I believe in you. They believe in you. Now, this self-talk stuff, it's not funny. It works. I'm telling you, you should talk to yourself often and say, you know what, Lord doesn't make any junk. Thank you, Lord, for not making me making any junk with me. He made me perfect. Okay? Now, here's the thing. If any of you have any questions about any direction you're going with your life, and I mean this with all my heart, if you have any questions with the direction or any help with anything that I've talked about, I'm right down there on the corner of 29th and Grant. Feel free to come by. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll sit down and visit. Okay, these are the things that have worked in my life and they will work in your life, Alex Scallion. <laughs> Remember this. Above everything else, I believe in you, we all believe in you, and God believes in you. Thank you.